The Fremont River irrigates approximately 16,000 acres of agricultural land in southern Utah, including the historic orchards and pastures managed by Capitol Reef National Park. In this semi-arid environment, the amount of snow each year is closely tied to the amount of available water. Their recent water flow predictions based on snowpack data from Snowtel monitoring stations have not aligned with the observed water flow. For example, during the 2016 to 2017 winter season, the snowpack measurements showed the year's snow total to be between 100% and 110%. For this reason, a normal water year was expected for irrigation purposes. Instead, by mid-summer, the state requested reductions in irrigation water from the Fremont River, which reduced Capitol Reef National Park's irrigation to 70%. While the state does not partition water from the Fremont River, it does require a certain volume of water reaches the Dirty Devil River downstream. During years of lower water flow, they can request reductions in irrigation to be sure the required volume is met. To address this problem, our team partnered with the National Park Service Northern Colorado Plateau Network and Capitol Reef National Park. I am Terry Fisk. I'm the Chief of Resource Management and Science at Capitol Reef National Park in Water is Life for us here. And so if we are looking at a reduction in overall moisture and flow, then we need to be changing the way we live and accommodating our lifestyles to balance with that. The Fremont River Basin Water Resources Team used normalized different snow index and land surface temperature data from the MODIS sensor aboard the Terra satellite. Time series maps of snow cover were created from 2000 to 2017 to visually show the change in snow extent. The team also modeled the snowmelt and water flow within the snowmelt observational watershed model. This will enhance current methods of predicting spring snowmelt and available water resources throughout the Fremont River Basin. This gives us a tool to look at snowpack on a basin-wide basis and compare those data from essentially remote sensing to the actual snow tail sites on the ground and eventually over time perhaps we, we can develop some sort of a relationship between the two. It's part of a broader effort to understand region-wide and local changes in climate and how that may affect us on the ground. And I think it's a, a tremendous value for the Park Service and everybody else as well to be doing this work.